Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for taking the time today to join our webinar, 10 Easy Ways to Collect More Online Reviews. Um, in the beginning here, we'll just do a little bit of an overview of what we're going to cover and an introduction. So as more of your colleagues trickle in, they'll have time to get in before uh, we get to the meat of what we're going to talk about today. So first and foremost, welcome. My name is Mark. I am one of the reviews program managers here at Gartner Digital Markets. Um, my role at the company is to help streamline and kickstart the review recruitment process for all of you vendors out there, and I have a team of wonderful colleagues who do the same. Um, hello to you who I have connected with before, either as an RPM, which is Review Program Manager, or via our past webinar, How to Collect Software Reviews with Garten Digital Markets, which was last September. Excuse me. Um, we have had some exciting updates since then, particularly for our uh, review sharing efforts across Gartner Digital Markets and uh, our free reviews as a service program, which I'll also touch on uh, a bit more down the road in this presentation. Um, today I'm excited to build on those reviews foundations and share 10 new ways you can easily collect more reviews, as well as best practices for review management. Please do submit questions throughout the presentation. My wonderful colleague Carrie is going to be collecting those, and we'll have some time for the end to address as many as we can. Um, we are recording this session, and uh, we will email it to all registrants later this week. So you can view this again anytime you want to or share it with your colleagues if they couldn't make it today. As always, you do have account managers here to help help at Captera if you don't get your questions answered today. Um, you have a dedicated reviews program manager like myself if you are listed on Captera with a basic listing. And you have a dedicated marketing advisor if you are a client of Captera. So we're trained to help boost reviews and can give you personalized recommendations and support anytime that you want it, um, not just on uh, a webinar day. So today's agenda, um, we're going to go cover a lot, so I will be moving at a pretty good speed. Um, again, please feel free to ask any clarifying questions, which we'll answer at the end. So we're going to take about an hour. Um, if you need to jump off, again, we'll be sending out that recording, so don't worry about missing anything. Um, first, we'll start off going over the overview of Gartner Digital Markets, jump into why reviews matter, which I feel like most people out there understand, but always is nice to touch on uh, in case you need to get buy-in from a manager or a decision maker at your company. Um, go through some easy ways for you guys to collect reviews. Also review how we can um, streamline responding to reviews and best practices for managing those. And then go over the reviews as a service program once again, leaving time, of course, for questions that you guys might have about the content we're covering here today. So very important. Uh, it's good to understand what Gartner Digital Markets is and what that network is made up of. So if you haven't um, already heard, Gartner has acquired uh, Captera, Software Vice, and GetApp, uh, creating Gartner Digital Markets. Um, in short, GDM, which is what we call um, Gartner Digital Markets, is your one-stop shop for B2B software customer acquisition. It's a network of sites that offers a unique opportunity for vendors like yourself um, to acquire high-volume, high-quality web traffic and sales leads from the world's leading online destinations for business software buyers. So each site provides a different, unique web experience that serves a wide variety of software buyer personas. Um, each of whom is a little bit different, which is why we have maintained individuality amongst the sites. Um, a big benefit for you guys out there is that as of December 2016, we have begun sharing reviews across the three sites. We completely understand that um, in today's age, a lot of your users are being asked to leave reviews frequently. Um, and to make it a bit of an easier process here at Gartner Digital Markets, whenever you get a review from a user to Captera or Software Advice or GetApp, those reviews are now shared across all three sites. This gives you triple the visibility for each review that you recruit, um, which is a big win when it comes to uh, giving your users the respect they deserve when it comes to the amount of time they spend leaving reviews. Um, and you don't have to ask them to leave one on each site. When it comes to Gartner Digital Markets, um, we are the world's largest software review platform. We see more than 4 million monthly visitors, have 150,000 software ratings and reviews, and more than 28,000 software vendors listed. So um, you'll notice, I'm sure, as you search around the internet that software advice, GetApp, and Captera continuously appear um, when uh, you're just looking around for potential sites um, that house your, your products um, and for potential you know, ways that people would come to find you and research your product as they're creating a short list of uh, products to purchase for a specific need. Uh, reviews also play a role in the uh, software research reports that we release periodically by all sites. Um, we really recommend collecting reviews consistently to increase your chances of qualifying for these various reports. The one that I do want to highlight um, has just 
gone live in new markets uh, this past January and February. Um, for those of you who don't know about it, it's called our Front Runners Quadrant, powered by Gartner Methodology and hosted on our sister company, Software Guide. Um, the Quadrant provides a data-driven assessment of products in a specific category to determine which products offer the best capability and value for small businesses. Um, it's really designed just to assist business leaders in making a software purchase decision, uh, and it's impacted by the reviews you have across the Gartner Digital Markets Network. Uh, with a minimum number of reviews needed being 20 to even be considered for inclusion. So that's a big reason we should definitely uh, be prioritizing for you guys, getting those reviews to the pages as quickly as possible. Um, for more information about the uh, Front Runners Quadrant, please do contact the RPM team. We'll show an email address for that later on in the presentation. And if you're a client, please do reach out to your marketing advisor to get a better understanding of what that's all about. So. Why do reviews matter? Uh, in today's age, most people understand why this is, but you might have a couple colleagues or a boss who isn't bought in yet, so that's what we're here to help them convince, get convinced of. Um, as you can see, uh, reviews really do have a huge impact when it comes to the purchasing process and research that buyers do these days um, across different markets. I mean, you know, whether you're looking for a restaurant, a hotel, or a new car, people look at reviews these days, and that does not escape the software industry. Um, as you can see from the stats on this page, um, this has really become prevalent. 94% of B2B software buyers um, you know, do online research before making the purchasing decision. 84% of people trust online reviews as much as a personal recommendation. You know, it really goes on and on there. Um, most prevalently that people are coming to sites like Captera, Software Rights and GetApp to do research on third party, you know, trusted authentic websites to ensure that you know, their fellow peers out there are getting a good experience when they come to uh, you know, using a certain product. The big reason um, that we want to help you guys focus on reviews is 66% um, of software buyers saying reading reviews significantly impact a purchasing decision. Um, so even if you're not a client of ours, uh, even having no reviews on your profile, your basic listing, is only hindering you um, because people come to those pages and we see them bounce off pretty quickly just because they see some great marketing materials and screenshots, but if they don't have reviews from their peers, they're not going to stick around too long. Uh, and to tie this back to the business impact, we have found that software business, uh, businesses on Capterra who have reviews do get more traffic to their profiles and significantly more leads than those without reviews. So even if you are just getting started, uh, first few reviews will impact your business quickly, and if you are established, getting more recent reviews and increasing the quantity of reviews will also still help you out. So the four keys to great reviews, um, that is listed in quantity, quality, consistency, and recency. Those are the four pillars of a great review. So what does that mean? Well, uh, businesses with a strong number of total reviews do stand out, uh, but clients look beyond the pure review quantity when assessing their software options. Users also look at the quality of reviews for helpful feedback, and they do pay attention to your average star rating to see how the majority of your clients rate your service. Um, I can't stress enough the importance of collecting new reviews frequently to show the consistency with your rating over time. Software buyers these days are very savvy and understand just how quickly UX can change um, and how updates can impact the overall experience of the software. So by getting reviews um, consistently, software buyers who land on your profile will feel assured that they will also have a similar experience with your software to those who have left the review. So I'm going to go through these in depth a little bit more um, when it comes to the four pillars. So Quantity, not too surprisingly, um, that's just the total overall reviews that you have on your profile. We highly recommend getting to 10 plus reviews um, as a starting point when it comes to your profile. As I mentioned, you need at least 20 to get into the front runner's quadrant. Uh, and the more reviews that you get, the more visibility you'll see on our site. Uh, and that'll also impact your inclusion in the content down the road. When it comes to quality, uh, this is referring to the average star rating um, and the content shared in your reviews. You need to aim to establish a high review quality rating. Um, you know, make sure that you just get the opportunity to have um, people providing different um, use cases for your product, and just make sure that everyone understands how your product can be useful um, in many different ways. You know, there's different factors that fall into that: the completeness of a review, content of what someone's talking about. If you have a product that touches on many different points <clears throat> or uh, features, I should say. It's great to have someone who leverages that software for each individual feature write a review for you because you never know who's coming to that profile, whether they're going to want to use X feature or Y feature. Uh, and additionally, you know, having someone come in and leave a three word review doesn't have the same impact as someone who comes in and writes three or four well thought out sentences. 
Uh, next, consistency. As I mentioned, um, this is just sentiment being shared across a lot of reviews. Imagine yourself looking at a product on a review site or a restaurant. Let's use that in this example. Um, if you see one great review, one bad review, one great review, one bad review, it's kind of all over the place. You're, what you're trying to do is just show to someone who comes to your page through a pretty good sample size that you're consistently on point, that you're not you know, having a good day here, a bad day there, um, whether it comes to your overall quality, functionality, customer support, what have you. You want to show them that on any given day, you know, you're coming in at a good rating. So that's when it comes to consistency, what we want you to focus on there. And lastly, uh, review recency. So this is one thing that I like to talk to vendors a lot um, when I talk to them on my phone calls about the reviews as a service program is vendors usually say, oh, you know, I got, you know, 30 reviews back in 2013. Why do I need to get more reviews now? Um, well, as I previously mentioned in this call, um, or webinar, I should say, we have seen that software buyers these days are very savvy when it comes to understanding just how quickly software can change. And, you know, uh, four years from 2013 to 2017 in the software world is more or less four centuries. So um, ensuring that you're consistently getting up-to-date reviews is only going to help convince potential buyers to take a look at your software and really consider it as a potential solution to whatever issue they might be having. Uh, additionally, we've done research reports and found that 71% of software buyers said they only consider reviews written within the last six months. So if you have reviews that are on the cusp there of going out of uh, date when it comes to the relevancy and the software research process, you should start um, putting together a plan of action when it comes to getting more current reviews. So now that we know why reviews matter, what partner to do the markets is, and the visibility you'll get to those reviews once you recruit them, um, how do you go about getting it? Well, first and foremost, uh, this is my point to plug the service that we put together as of fall of 2016. It's called a Reviews as a Service program, which we've shortened to RAS, which is a little bit of a play on SAS. Um, it's highly effective, it's really easy to implement, and it's completely free. Um, I will be completely honest in saying that last year we um, you know, talked to our site visitors, and the biggest thing they said they want to see when they do research of products is more reviews. You know, more current reviews, more, um, you know, qu larger quantities of reviews. It has become the biggest point, you know, of contention when they're trying to figure out do I choose product A, B, or C. So to streamline that process and take the work off of your plate when it comes to review recruitment, we put together this service where we'll email clients on your behalf and you'll see reviews roll in. And we're also going to offer the opportunity for us to incentivize your users, again, at no cost to you. So overall, um, you know, we've seen the RAS service uh, really create some wonderful new relationships between clients and their user base because sometimes these are users who the client might think has gone dark, um, hasn't been as engaged with marketing materials lately, but they'll see this opportunity to leave a review and they'll leave a glowing review. Um, or they'll reach out to their customer success team to talk through a problem that this review ask has kind of sparked for them. So it really does help in a numerous uh, amount of ways. Overall, you know, our RAS campaigns have seen an average open rate over 30%, click-through rate over 4.3%, and a conversion rate um, that hovers between 8.5% and 9%. Um, so across the board, you know, that's over well <laughs> over 830 different campaigns for vendors um, that we've launched in the last five months. So um, it's proven to be effective. Um, we will provide a bit more information about this program um, later on in the presentation, and you'll also have an opportunity to request information be an email we'll send after the webinar, um, but I can't stress enough just how easy this makes review recruitment um, and how you should, uh, you know, definitely take advantage of it when it comes to getting your buyer, your users to buy into leaving a review. Uh, one final point on this before I move on: um, you now can select the incentives that we're offering for this program. Previously, to anyone who heard this presentation um, back in September, we were only able to provide Amazon gift cards. We're now allowing you, the vendor, to make the choice when it comes to Amazon or Visa as the um, channel through which your users can spend their incentives. Um, we know there are altruistic, great people out there who would just leave a review to help potential software buyers and, you know, to thank you for being the wonderful vendor you are and being happy with, you know, the service you're providing. But at the end of the day, not too surprisingly, a lot of people want to get something in return for their time, even if, even if it is just taking two minutes to leave a review on our site. Um, so we'll give that $10 uh, gift card or uh, Visa card to the first 25 people that leave a review for each campaign. Um, and to clarify one point um, that I always get asked, and hopefully this will um, 
get to that uh, before you can even ask it to carry. Um, there is no limit to the number of campaigns that you run. Uh, we do ask that they are new users for each campaign. Um, and each campaign that we run has a new bank of gift cards available. So if you run one campaign in March and then, you know, towards the beginning of April, we, you reconnect with your marketing advisor or with your review program manager and say, hey, that was great. You know, we saw some great results. Let's run it again. The next campaign will also have a new bank of incentives available. So, uh, again, another great reason why you should leverage it. Now, if you are, you know, willing to supplement the work from the RAS campaign with your own internal efforts, um, you know, we're happy to help you guys out with that as well. Um, I recommend taking advantage of the communication infrastructure you already have. So I'm going to list out, um, you know, nine examples here beyond RAS of what you can do. Um, don't feel like you need to create something just to do what I'm going to recommend here in this webinar. Um, if you have an email list, leverage it. If you don't, um, you know, I recommend you create one, but <laughs> don't start with just asking for reviews. And if you have a great social platform, you know, go ahead and leverage that as well. Um, but make sure whatever you do just feels authentic to your brand. So with email campaigns, um, you know, it's a great channel to take advantage of. I recommend building out, um, you know, review collection through emails ongoing in your marketing and sales effort. Um, as long as it becomes a continuous process, it isn't a one-off ask. Um, it becomes almost more routine and more normalized to your users. So, you know, be sure that you just try to find a point at which you onboard clients that you ask them to leave that review. Whether it's a two-week follow-up from whoever, you know, sold them the product saying, hey, we really appreciate you being a new client, please leave a review. Or if it's three months down the road and then ask from your account manager or client success rep, just make it consistent. That only helps when it comes to keeping this on the top of mind for you and your employees. Um, other best practices is just test different offers to see if they make an impact. I'll tell you with the RAS program we've done, um, our team has done uh, an unbelievable amount of A and B testing just to see what subject lines resonate, what content resonates, is a button going to work better than a hyperlink, you know, whatever it is. Uh, don't get discouraged if the first thing you try with an email doesn't work, you know, just try something else. Be sure to personalize the email. Um, it seems pretty basic, but um, nothing works worse than just saying, hi, customer, please leave a review. Um, you know, at least take the time to put their first name in the subject line or the salutation, whatever you would like there. Um, and don't forget to follow up. A, a lot of vendors always say, oh, we don't want to be pushy and we don't want to bother our clients. Um, but as long as you're framing this as the right type of offer, you know, they're not going to mind. If you're saying, hey, we really value your feedback. We want to improve our product and make this something that's more appealing. Please leave a review of us. Um, that's way different than, you know, just nudging someone consistently saying, hey, give me five stars, give me five stars, give me five stars. Um, so just make sure that you're being authentic, that you're really making this a uh, good win for them because it helps them get a better experience from your product, while also being clear that it's going to help you because it helps, you know, potentially bring on some new clients. Um, so that's that when it comes to email. Uh, I will provide an example here, which will be sent out in the slide. Uh, it's pretty simplistic. You know, you don't have to write the next great American novel when it comes to an email like this. You just want to make sure that they understand how you're going to benefit, how they're going to benefit, um, and just how quick it really is when it comes to leaving a review. Um, I'll show you what it looks like to leave a review on Capterra later on in this presentation, but I can guarantee you, I've done it at events, you know, help people walk through those forms. It does take two or three minutes, so you're not really asking for too much when it comes to them leaving a review. Next, as I mentioned in that example, um, social media is a great way to get some reviews to come through. Um, you'll likely already have some social channels already created. Um, and you probably use them as a way to showcase your business personality and interact with clients. Just adding reviews and an ask for reviews to that mix um, to show that you really value reviews and you want to build your reputation will only help make that ask, um, you know, a tweet that you send, for example, uh, asking someone to leave a review, it'll make it make more sense. You know, if you're consistently talking about reviews and integrating that into your brand messaging, um, again, looks more regular and more normalized when someone sees that. And also, uh, you know, a great way to use social um, and get more people to want to look at your reviews and leave reviews is when you get a great new review, please do share that on social. Um, you know, call it out, tag the author if you can find them on Twitter, um, and make sure that you thank them for their feedback. You know, not only does that kind of build up a brand awareness uh, amongst your current followers, but you never know when someone's searching around, you know, on Twitter for mentions of your brand and sees that type of an interaction, that is a great representation of your social um, media strategy as well as your customer support. Um, you also can periodically ask for reviews from other channels. Um, simply making a request for feedback, as I mentioned earlier, is a great way to do that, whether that's on Facebook, LinkedIn, 
Quora, you know, whatever it may be. Wherever your users are, go to that place and use that channel. Next, marketing materials. Um, to recruit more reviews, you just be sure to add those to your existing marketing materials when it comes to the reviews you already have, as well as some of the collateral that I'll talk through here in a second. Um, since reviews have become so important in convincing new users to add you to their software shortlist or check you out as a potential solve to whatever issue they might be having, having reviews included um, helps gain trust from potential users and also help them, um, you know, if they're a current client, see that your reviews are housed somewhere and that they can go leave a review of their own. Um, as I mentioned, we do offer a reviews badge that you can use in your materials. I'll show you how to get that later on. Um, and I highly recommend that you also highlight snippets from previous reviews as testimonials to include throughout your content. Uh, if it's an active, you know, internet piece of content, not a printed page, of course, unless it's a short, you know, link, um, leave a link to a URL where people can go read your reviews, so to that profile, or to the review submission form. And every vendor out there, you guys, if you have a Captera profile, has a unique URL for your review submission form. So you can send people directly to that page and avoid having them go through the profile itself. Um, potential clients love to read online reviews. They trust feedback from other clients. So making your reviews easy to find um, and read during pitching is always a quick, easy way to win them over. Um, and that can be done by including you know, a link as shown in this example slide here um, of your email signature, whether that's asking current clients to write a review, if that's your success, client success team, um, or if it's your sales team, it would be more, hey, check out our reviews. Um, and also, when you attend events, make your reviews known, add your reviews as materials on your booth, and don't be afraid to show uh, prospective new clients what your clients already think. Next, the vendor portal on Captera is an amazing resource to leverage when it comes to getting reviews, and it's something that everyone out there has access to, whether you're a client or non-client. If you forgot your login credentials, just let the uh, RPM team know or your marketing advisor, and they can resend those over to you, no problem. Um, in that vendor portal, um, you can get a custom form link to send to your clients when it comes to leaving a review. Um, you can also get a review that, review that, excuse me, that is coded to your reviews and profile on Captera, which you can add to your marketing material. So to log in and gain access to those, it's pretty simplistic. You would go into your vendor portal, go to the um, review tab, and in the middle of that page, there's a link to the review form, which is um, a snippet of here is a screenshot. As you can see, it's three star ratings um, that are required for overall quality, ease of use, features, and functionality. A couple optional, um, customer support and value for money. You know not everyone has leveraged customer support yet, so that's why that's optional. And value for money only makes sense if they were involved in the purchasing process, so that's why that is optional. And then one open text box of 100 characters at minimum. So less than a tweet, so not too much, a couple sentences. Um, and it really gives them a chance just to feed, give feedback regarding their experience with the um, product. And then to request a review, if you click this link over here on the right side, that'll um, open up your um, email, preferred email um, carrier, and you can uh, just use the link that's pre-populated in that message and send it out to your users to have them leave a review. Next, as I mentioned, the badge is a great way to highlight the reviews that you already have. Um, again, as I mentioned, you go into this reviews tab here, there's a reviews badge sublink in that header, and you just go and get that code and link that, or place that, I should say, wherever you would like to, whether it's your website, a newsletter, um, a landing page for a specific event you have coming up. Um, use it as much as you can. I mean, again, this only shows um, that you have the wherewithal and the smarts to get reviews and helps potential new buyers get a better understanding of what your current clients think. So I will say, um, as a caveat, not surprisingly, you do need at least one review to get that code. So if you don't have any reviews, that's another benefit of getting that first review. Uh, when it comes to your business website, um, don't overlook that as a place where you can generate a lot of reviews in a more passive manner. Um, you can add these two different uh, badges to your site. Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, you kind of want to um, position that towards whatever audience you're looking to talk to. So if these are current clients, of course, showing them, hey, write a review on Captera um, makes a lot more sense than showing that to a prospective new client where you'd rather show them, hey, these are the reviews that we have. This is why you should you know, dive into the deep end with us and take on um, you know, our product as your solve for whatever issue you're facing. Um, this also you know, just does give more validity and builds trust to your brand. Um, as much as you can show that there are third parties out there like Captera that have vetted reviews, made sure they're authentic, and can show that um, your product is a uh, good fit and you know, uh, rated well amongst your current users, 
that's only going to help you, uh, again, when it comes to uh, helping win over new clients and showing your current clients why they should stick around. For blog content, um, it's really easy to include reviews in your blog. If you already generate content, just consider adding topics on reviews occasionally. As I mentioned previously, um, you should do this more regularly than just once a quarter or you know, once a year. Please make it more than that. Um, if it's something that just comes up every once in a while, it won't ring true to your uh, you know, brand voice. Um, it won't necessarily ring as something that you guys really want to invest your time and effort to with your current clients. Um, through these posts, you can highlight some of your other best reviews, discuss improvements you've made on the product based on feedback from users uh, through those reviews, and even ask for more just by simply linking directly to your review submission form. Um, so again, really easy way for you guys to take advantage of a, a communication method you already have laid out um, and get some easy reviews there. Contests and promotions are another great way to go ahead and build up that review count. Um, we recommend hosting periodic contests or special promotions to just get a surge in reviews. You know, considering um, a holiday that's coming up or a special theme that you might be able to use, just set up some ground rules um, and then you know, make it transparent and spread it out to your world of users. You know, creating urgency through timelines, deadlines, it really just helps create interest and generates more reviews and setting something out as an open, ongoing effort. Um, because as you guys can all understand, I'm sure that everyone gets reviews matter and want to help, uh, but there's only so many hours in the day and bandwidth is usually an issue. So if you tell your users, hey, we want a review, and they say, well, when's the deadline? And you say, well, whenever, you know, it's going to be at the bottom of their list for a while. So giving them a reason to do it today rather than tomorrow um, only helps build up that count for you. Um, I will say, that for Capterra specifically, um, we do have a contest of our own coming up soon since it's March. We're hosting our annual Review Madness contest, um, which is going to be available for our clients only this year. If you are a Capterra client, please keep your eye out for more information on Review Madness, which will be coming out in the uh, next week, few weeks, I should say. The ninth way, um, if you haven't had enough ways yet, uh, to get some more reviews from your clients is leveraging surveys and client feedback methods you already have in place. So when you host surveys or client feedback groups, um, you know, find out who those engaged clients are and kind of pinpoint them and put a, you know, a tag on them in whatever system you use, um, CRM-wise or your own personal notes or, God forbid, or whatever notebook you track all your clients in. Um, just mark them down as a potential uh, business to leave a review of your product. And if they say yes, just follow up within a few days, provide a link to the review submission form, um, and just make sure that they don't let it fall off their radar. Again, a deadline of some sort will help for that, whether you want to provide them with a, you know, a peek at a certain piece of content you're creating, uh, a value add of a free trial of feature X, which you're going to add as a potential you know, new um, launch in addition to your product. That can help you know, close the deal there. Uh, and just make sure you show your appreciation for their feedback and the time they dedicated to providing insights. Um, for both the internal survey and the review on Capterra, um, at the end of the day, you know, people obviously have so many things to do. So them taking the two or three minutes of their time to leave a review, um, again, is going to benefit you a lot. So just making sure that they know that you appreciate that is going to go a long way in strengthening that client relationship. Lastly, uh, events and in-person meetings. These are way underutilized, in my opinion, when it comes to uh, generating reviews. You know, whether you're at South by Southwest, Dreamforce, Saster, Sastock, wherever you go, there should always be an opportunity for you to leverage current clients who are wandering around um, and generate great reviews from them because there's something that's there in an in-person, face-to-face meeting that can get lost in an email, a phone call, a Google Hangout, whatever it may be. Um, so the next time you attend a conference, host your own conference, whatever it may be, um, you know, just host a uh, iPad that has a review submission form on it and ask people to leave reviews, especially if it's someone you had a great experience with, you know, during your conversation about the future of your relationship. Um, then just make sure you use all of your different local meetups, events, in-person meetings as opportunities to identify brand advocates. Um, if they're taking time to attend your event, more than likely they're going to be open to leaving a review of you on Capterra, GetApp, or Software Advice. So just make sure you ask them to join the program. Um, you know, refer somebody else, a colleague that could leave a review, um, or get them to submit a review on the spot um, while you have their attention face to face. Um, when I'm on that point of referring colleagues, uh, please do understand that if you have a client that has multiple users um, at their company, each one of those people is um, 
able to leave a review of your product. So especially when it comes to our RAS campaigns, we get that question a lot of can I only submit one user per company, um, where I have people leveraging my product, and uh, the answer to that is no. You can submit as many as you would like. There's no limit to the number of people per company, so please do keep that in mind uh, when you're doing your own campaigns and when you're leveraging our RAS program. So now that you have reviews, um, you're going to want to showcase a preview of your customer support and respond to those reviews, which you can easily do within our um, portal. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, if you need your login credentials, please do let us know and get those out to you. Um, by responding to reviews in the portal, um, just make sure that you don't focus only on negative reviews. You should make it a habit to thank happy customers for taking the time out of their day to leave a review, as I mentioned. Um, you know, don't just make it something where you're always only responding to negative reviews because, as I mentioned, people come here to look at those reviews when they're making a purchasing decision and just seeing that you thank someone for their time um, for leaving a great review is going to ring true um, to them you know, and kind of validate you as a uh, great potential new uh, partner for them. So within the vendor portal, as you can see here, this is back within that review tab we talked about earlier. You just go over to the viewed or not viewed hyperlink, um, and that's just to allow your team to see whether or not you've had someone look into the details of this review. In this screenshot here, this is what the review's detail looks like. This shows all the star ratings that they uh, included, their information, and if you want to respond to a review, you just fill out this widget here on the top right side of the page. And if you would like to, since we do require email addresses as part of our QA process when someone leaves a review, you can send your response directly to the reviewer as well as publishing it on the profile. Um, so again, this is a great tactic when it comes to showing your customer support and ensuring that you're addressing both negative reviews and positive reviews. So do's and don'ts when it comes to reviews. Um, you know, as I mentioned, beyond just focusing on negative reviews, there are other things that you should and shouldn't do with this. Um, when it comes to reviews, make sure that you're trying to keep this as prompt as possible. You don't want to give people the um, idea that you're only doing this once a quarter or once a year. Um, and again, uh, our reviews are time stamped as well as the responses. So if you're responding to someone who left a review back in 2013 tomorrow after this webinar, it will look a little bit strange. So you might not want to start with that. You might just want to put a best practice in place to leave responses to all reviews that come through moving forward, whether that's within you know, three business days, one week, two weeks, whatever you can do. Um, please don't feel overwhelmed and don't do anything. You know, that's the worst case scenario. Uh, when you're replying, be authentic. Uh, I, Kind of similar to what I talked about earlier with the email outreach, nothing kind of pushes people away from a brand than just saying, hello, sir or ma'am, thank you for leaving a review, we appreciate it, or I am sorry, you had a bad experience, thank you, customer support. You know, use their name, um, sign it with your personal name if you can, um, you know, make sure that you're just double checking the reply, good grammar, spelling, take your time, you know, show them that you didn't just sit down at the keyboard and, you know, throw together a response within one minute before you had your morning coffee. You know, show them they matter. Uh, again, recognize the positive. That's just a great best practice. Address concerns and negative reviews. Um, if there are specific issues that are mentioned, don't ignore them. Uh, instead, be transparent on how people can address those issues. Because a lot of times, it's just confusion. You know, if someone who doesn't understand a certain feature, you know, there's something about the uh, product that was confusing them, make sure that you take the time to answer that question and make sure they understand that there is something they could be doing different to have a way different experience of your product. Um, and although it is less than ideal that it comes up in a negative review, um, it gives your team the opportunity to address an issue with a client before they leave your business and they're no longer a client of yours. So I think that in the end of the uh, day, you'd rather have one negative review where someone realizes there's an issue that can be addressed than losing a client. Um, for don'ts, uh, you know, don't use a templated reply. If you have the same response in all reviews, people pick that out very quickly these days. Um, don't uh, take it personally. That's something that we see a lot and we totally understand because you guys are pouring a lot of hard work into these products um, and you have a personal tie to them. Uh, you know, if you see a review that frustrates you, take a deep breath, you know, take a walk, <laughs> go get a cup of coffee and come back and then try to leave, you know, a more uh, constructive uh, review that addresses their concerns without making it personal. Um, because that's an easy way to lose a client is if they feel personally attacked. Um, again, we will be sending out these slides with these do's and don'ts explain a little bit further in the comments section, uh, the notes sections, I should say, below these slides. So um, don't feel that um, you know, you're going to lose out on these best practices just by uh, not writing down enough notes as I talk through. So 
So as I mentioned, negative reviews are a fact of life. Um, you know, I will say that they happen and they will continue to happen. Uh, even for the best product out there, there's going to be someone who's confused, someone who may feel that they didn't have something get addressed quickly enough. Um, and that's the biggest reason I hear from vendors that they don't want to get any reviews is they say, well, I have zero reviews, but that's better than having 10 reviews and have two negatives come through. And I can't tell you something um, is that's just so far from the truth. You know, it's a situation where in today's day and age, um, you know, ignorance is not bliss when it comes to product reviews. Uh, you know, you can't just hide from them. You have to be able to address them, to confront them, and to uh, fix the issues. And if you look at reviews as an opportunity to solidify and clarify, you know, client relationship, then that should be only a good thing. Um, and when it comes to reviews these days, people are so used to seeing them, whether it's Yelp, TripAdvisor, Hotel Tonight, Kayak, whatever it is, they want to see a mix of reviews. Um, you know, 68% of consumers trust reviews more when they see both good and bad scores. Personally, if I go to a page on Amazon, for example, and look at a product and see only five-star reviews, um, my first thought is that there's something awry. It's a red flag for me, personally. Um, so making sure that you are obviously striving to create the best product possible that results in the most four- and five-star reviews is an understandable goal. Um, but when you get your first one, two, or three-star review, that is not a reason to pull the plug on review recruitment. If anything, it's an opportunity for you to, A, um, you know, help mitigate a potential, you know, lost client situation, and uh, B, improve the product if necessary. You know, if it's not just an issue of confusion, if there is something that they see as something you can do better at, um, you know, don't take it personally and just improve. And the number one secret to getting reviews after all of this is, not too surprisingly, you just have to ask. You know, a lot of vendors come back to us and say, we just don't feel comfortable asking, which is, you know, understandable. Um, but as long as you're wording this correctly um, and you're showing them that this is an opportunity for them to help you improve the product and then improve their user experience, they're going to have a pretty good response to that. Um, and just make sure that you're proudly showcasing these reviews. You know, there's nothing worse for someone who takes the time to leave a review you know, goes about their business doing so, and then goes looks at your marketing materials whenever you update them, and doesn't see anything included about reviews, they're going to think, you know, okay, why did I do that? Are they not publishing these? Are they not, you know, circulating these as a main factor into why others should, you know, leverage the business? And I will say, nothing makes the client feel better and more special than having their quote or snippet of a review called out in a one-pager or your About Us page or testimonials page or what have you. Um, so please feel free to Leverage information that you get to your Captera reviews and snippet form or uh, whatever you would like to across your um, site. So as a little bit of a wrap up here, um, just make sure that you're following these best practices when it comes to uh, getting reviews. Um, we wanted to provide a little bit of a summation here for you to leverage and refer back to. So, you know, make sure it's an ongoing review collection strategy. The reviews of the service program, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there's no limit to the number of campaigns you can run. Um, and it's something I think you should absolutely leverage. If you have, do it again. If you haven't, let's do it. Um, but you should also use that as a supplement to your own internal efforts because a stream of consistent reviews is only going to help you. Make sure you personalize your outreach for greater response. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, saying, hi, customer, please leave a review, not too surprisingly, isn't going to result in the uh, best response rate. So make sure you take the time to make these people feel like people. Humanize the message. You know, say, hey, Rob, Thanks for being a client. We appreciate your patronage. Please take some time to leave a review on Capterra to give us a better understanding of how you're doing with the experience of XProp. Um, remember, the greater you reach, the bigger the impact. Again, that's another thing a lot of vendors talk to me about is they're afraid to open up the review recruitment process to a wider array of clients than those they have handpicked um, because they're afraid of negative reviews. They don't understand, you know, some of these people might not have had an engagement with their product team in a long time. Um, but you'll be surprised. You know, a lot of people out there, you haven't heard from them because they're having a good experience. You know, sometimes no news is good news. So reaching out to those people and giving them the chance to leave that review um, can only benefit you guys because, again, review quantity is impacting your visibility across all three websites now that these reviews are shared. It's impacting your placement and qualification for certain pieces of content. Um, and finally, it's just helping your visibility on each different directory that you're listed in since we sort profiles by number of reviews for basic listings. Um, fifth, uh, or fourth, I should say, uh, consider adding a deadline. Uh, again, you know, people understand reviews matter, uh, but at the end of the day, it's really a low priority for a lot of people. 
So ensuring that you give them a deadline as to when they should act can only help increase the response rate and make sure that they have a time in mind of when they should do something by. So whether that's you saying, you know, we're going to give you a $10 credit to X aspect of our business if you leave a review by March 15th, you'll be surprised how many reviews you see come through on March 14th. Uh, number five, be sure you respond to all reviews. Um, this is the best practice that um, a lot of vendors have started to uh, implement you know, within the last six months since we really started to ramp up our review collection um, and review management um, discussions with vendors. And it's only, respond, only resulted in um, good experiences with clients. You know, it's one of those situations where even if it's something that can't be resolved, uh, clients do feel um, very appreciative when someone reaches out to them. They just feel like it's a great representation of you caring about their business and you taking the time to do a little bit of one-on-one -on -one work with them, which goes a long way, especially if it's in person. You know, don't shy away from someone who left a negative review at a uh, you know, event that you're attending or hosting. And last but not least, always say thank you. You know, again, these people are taking some time out of their day, uh, you know, to leave a review of uh, your product on our site. And uh, that's, you know, no small feat. Uh, if you guys, I feel like every minute is blocked out for some project or call or meeting. Um, so then finding the time, although again, it is only two or three minutes to leave a review, is worth a, a thank you. So um, if you want to go above and beyond, uh, handwritten note will do more for you than you ever realized, but an email or a quick note below the review saying thank you um, will mean a lot to them. So thank you very much for joining us. I really hope that did help. Next up, uh, we'll do a little bit of Q&A to answer any questions that might have come through. Um, if you're interested in learning more about a Reviews as a Service program uh, and you're a basic vendor who has a free profile on Capterra, please email us at rpm at capterra.com and we'll be in touch. If you are a client, please reach out to your marketing advisor. They'll be happy to help you set up a campaign to get reviews. Um, and as I previously mentioned, you know, the Reviews as a Service program is a ridiculously easy way to streamline that process, take that work off of your team's plate, and give our team the responsibility of initial outreach, follow-up outreach, tracking you know, key performance indicators, um, and also handling incentive distribution. So uh, all you would need to do is put together a list of users you think would be a good fit to leave a review, upload it into our system, uh, and from there we do everything else. So there really isn't um, any reason you shouldn't leverage that program because again, it is completely free. There is no cost associated with the RAS program, um, even for the incentives. Uh, as I previously mentioned, we're really focusing our efforts on this and trying to make this as uh, easy for vendors as possible. So we remove any payment barrier there. Um, the only thing I will say is with the list, um, we highly recommend uh, making them a minimum of 10 users. As I mentioned, our uh, average conversion rate is roughly between 8 and 9%. So um, anything below 10 does have diminishing returns when it comes to the review generated. And I want to ensure that, especially for your first campaigns, you see some great results, uh, which I know you will when you leverage RAS. So that will be my last plug for that for now. Um, moving on to questions. So I will defer Carrie. Do we have any good ones? <laughs> Awesome. All righty. So first and foremost, how do you convince your ultra busy customers to leave a review without sounding pushy? So I think I kind of touched on this earlier. So this is more or less about how you phrase the ask to your customers. So ensure that they understand that this isn't just something that's going to be benefiting you, which it obviously will. It will also be benefiting them in the long term. You know, if you phrase it as saying, hey, we're trying to figure out well, what the average user experience is like for X products. Please leave a review on Capterra, which will help better inform us when it comes to any changes or updates we need to make. And you'll be surprised, there actually are a lot of positive reviews that come through campaigns like this, um, where people you know, give four or five stars, but do leave some constructive criticism within the review. So don't feel like just by someone leaving you something you can do better at, it's going to be a negative review. Uh, additionally, uh, getting these users to leave a review, I'm going to re resort back to, uh, or revert back, excuse me, to the uh, RAS program. As I mentioned previously, um, we understand there are people out there that will leave a review just because they're kind-hearted souls, but at the end of the day, people want something for their time, which we kind of understand, um, which is why we're offering that incentive, whether it's the $10 Visa card or the $10 Amazon gift card. Um, not too surprisingly, we've seen that help bump up success rate. Uh, and if you're doing your own internal campaign to supplement your RAS efforts, um, you know, take some time to figure out what you think your users want to want to see 
to um, you know reward them for leaving a review. So I think I mentioned this earlier, but uh, you know access to a piece of content you created, whether it's a white paper or a blog post, potentially you know leveraging a new feature you're rolling out for free for a little bit as a beta tester, um, giving them something to kind of make them feel special and rewarded for leaving that review can only help. I hope that answered your question, whoever asked that. Uh, second, let's see. Currently, we do not have any reviews on Capterra. Will getting even a small number of reviews make a difference for our business? Absolutely. Um, we have a lot of profiles on our site that have no reviews but do receive traffic, which is highly impressive um, because, as I mentioned before, we list our directories for basic listings by number of reviews. So um, to see that we have so many people um, going to these profiles, even though there's no reviews, signals to us that there are people you know, coming through organic search on Google or really just doing their due diligence and coming to Capterra and searching within our search system um, to find you. And when they get to that page and they don't see any reviews, um, they'll probably look at your marketing materials, uh, but they'll most likely bounce off because these days, you know, as I mentioned, so many software buyers want to see those reviews as they're making a purchasing decision. So um, the difference between zero reviews and one or two reviews is amazing. It, it means so much more than moving the needle from 10 to 20, which I think still matters a lot. Um, but moving from zero to one or two, that's going to meet a world of difference to the user experience of someone who's researching a product and comes to that page. Um, so great question. I would highly recommend leveraging it. Um, and for the RAS program, um, to kind of kickstart that process if you've never done review recruitment before, we're more than happy to start with a smaller kind of proof of concept test for you because, again, there's no limit to the number of campaigns that you run. And then down the road, running a larger one once you feel comfortable with that option um, to, again, supplement whatever you're doing internally. Number three, is there a best practice guideline for when we send a request to a new customer to provide a review? Uh, more than happy to provide some templates. Um, we've put those together in the past and we can share those if you guys would like. Um, when it comes to sending a request to a new customer to provide a review, I think this kind of goes back to the first question I answered. Again, it's about how you frame it. Um, for them, you want to make sure that they're having a good experience. You want to make sure that the onboarding process went well, that they have good customer support. Um, it's kind of giving them the opportunity to, uh, in a pseudo-anonymous format, you know, a lot, give their feedback regarding you know, their current experience with the onboarding process and being a new client. Um, I will say, when it comes to these types of messaging, or messages, I should say, uh, keep them short. You, know, you want to be concise. You don't need to give them a million reasons as to why they should leave a review. Um, you know, it's kind of the fine line that our team has come to in the RAS campaign is you need to be um, educational and informational without being verbose. You know, you don't want to say too much. You don't want to give them too many action items or too many reasons why because if people see a lot of text on the page, they're just going to bounce off. So, you know, keep it short and sweet and to the point. Um, make sure they understand there's value for you and for them. Uh, and hopefully that will get them to take action, especially as a new user. Fourth question. Um, RAS is free of charge and the first 25 reviewers get a $10 gift card. What's the catch? Uh, I have received that question more than you guys know on the phone calls I've had. Um, some of you might be laughing because you probably asked me that on a call you've had with me. Um, believe me, I understand. Um, at the end of the day, this seems too good to be true. Uh, it's not. For us, as I mentioned, um, you know, the biggest thing that we're trying to uh, improve upon, and we already, as I mentioned, do a great job with a leader when it comes to software reviews, um, is we're trying to just get more. You know, we know that people come to our site. They want to see reviews, and they want to see a high quantity of recent reviews. Um, and when I first started in this role, uh, my only job was uh, helping vendors like you be coached on running your own internal campaigns. Um, and I had a lot of vendors tell me, like, yeah, we would love to. We just don't have the time. Um, so we took that work off of your plate, you know, which is why we're running this RAS campaign now, um, because we know for us it's going to benefit us by giving us the reviews we want to see on our pages, which is hopefully going to result in some return visitors for people who are researching you know, CRM this time. The next time they need an HR product, hopefully they'll come back to Capterra or Software Advice or GetApp to uh, take a look at what people are saying in those products. And um, you know, at the end of the day, I I'm more than happy to hop on a call with anyone who still doesn't believe me that there's no catch here. Uh, we also have a very strict marketing policy in place for the program, which does stipulate that um, we do not use the list of users you provide for these campaigns for anything other than the RAS program, um, that there is no other uh, email they receive for RAS beyond the three that we have in our drip campaign. Uh, and finally, we delete the list of users once the campaign comes to a close. So 
Um, you know, we're not storing user information uh, when it comes to, you know, next campaigns. You're going to have to upload a new list if you want to run that. Um, and at the end of the day, it's about reviews for us. So I, I hope that kind of uh, eases any fears you have about the program. Let's see. Next, if we're hesitant to incentivize our users with a gift card for leaving a review, do we have to offer one if we participate in RAS? You do not. There is no requirement to leave uh, or have an incentive be provided to your users for leaving a review. If you would like to use our team purely as a, um, you know, email marketing team um, that just runs the campaign for you, we're happy to do that. Um, you know, and we have seen success with those campaigns, especially if you prime your users and let them know, hey, you know, expect to see a campaign come through uh, from a collaborative co-branded email address because these uh, emails are not directly from Captera. They're from, you know, your name at reviews.captera.com with your logo front and center saying, hey, so-and-so, we appreciate you being a user of buy products. Um, we really appreciate your patronage. Please take the time to leave a review on Captera below with um, an incentive explanation below that if necessary. And if that's not something you want to do, you can just remove that from the email and just send it out like, um, you know, like it previously read without the uh, incentive information. So not required at all. Um, if you want to do it, um, I don't see any reason why not because there's no cost associated with it. Um, but I've had vendors say that they just don't want to go down that road and I completely respect that. And it's not something you need to do. Uh, let's see, how do you get the Captera Reviews badge for use in your marketing collateral? Um, so again, that's in the vendor portal, um, which is, uh, if you just go to captera.com backslash login, um, you'll see where you need to enter your username and password. Uh, if you don't have those, just email us and we can send that out to you as you need it. Um, from there, it'll give you a chance to uh, go into the portal, go to the Reviews tab, and in the subheader there's a Reviews uh, badge area where you can click in and, uh, you know, just make sure that you have uh, the opportunity to get the code. Uh, again, you need to have one review uh, to access that badge. So, um, again, another good reason for all you out there who have zero reviews to get that first one, it gives you access to that piece of collateral. Um, so I think those are the big questions that we pulled out right now. Um, if there's anything else that you would like information on, please do email us, rpm at captera.com, or get in touch with your marketing advisor. Um, we're always more than happy to talk you through your uh, self-service campaign, you know, whatever you want to do internally to recruit reviews, and additionally, you know, to walk you through the benefits of the reviews as a service program we have here um, to help kickstart that review recruitment. Uh, and make sure that we have this going on a steady uh, stream of new reviews. So that's it for now. Please do expect to see a uh, copy of the presentation come through as well as a recording of this webinar. Uh, I do appreciate everyone who took the time today to attend, uh, and I look forward to speaking with you or having you speak with one of my colleagues soon. Thanks so much, everyone. I hope you all have a wonderful day.